we are trying to find the limits of these two functions as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. Before we actually find these using the rule that we just established, I want to point out that these functions, it would probably take you a long time to plug in numbers into these functions. They are fairly involved rational functions. So even plugging in the number 10 into f of x, you know, it'd take a long time just to type it in your calculator. And the same thing with g of x, plugging in any of these things. So numerically, they're going to be quite difficult. And even graphically, they might not look very nice, depending on the window we choose. So let's use the rules we just saw. All right, so the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. Notice that in this case, the degree on top is smaller than the degree on bottom. We have a degree 7 polynomial on top. We have a degree 8 polynomial on bottom. So this limit as x goes to infinity is simply 0. By the way, this would have also worked the same way no matter how much smaller. So if this were a degree 4 polynomial on top, it would work in the exact same manner. As long as it's a smaller degree, it doesn't matter how much smaller the degree is, as long as it's smaller. The same thing is true as x approaches negative infinity. You also get zero. So as long as we're approaching, excuse me, as long as our numerator has smaller degree than our denominator, we get zero as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. Let's look at the function g of x. With g of x, the top polynomial and the bottom polynomial are of the same degree. So the limit of g of x would be the limit of the leading terms. Leading terms are 12x to the fifth and just x to the fifth, which is limit 12. So 12 over 1, which is 12. I'm writing these x to the fifths here just so that you see that they were the leading terms. Okay, but I could write just 12 over 1 if I'd like. By the way, notice that here I'm getting a positive 12 because if you think about plugging in big numbers into x to the fifth, and x to the fifth, they're going to be the same. Um, they're they're going to be positive, right? So this is going to be a positive 12 times a really big positive number, really big positive number on the bottom. So the positive numbers are going to cancel each other out. So you get a 12. As far as, oops, negative infinity goes, well, it's the exact same argument. They are the same degree. So we're going to get 12 over 1 or 12 for the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And again, we're getting a positive 12 because x to the fifth over x to the fifth, that's negative over negative. Those negatives cancel each other out. And so you get a positive 12. That is how you save a lot of time with these limits as x goes to infinity. If we have rational functions, 
I can just compare the growth rate on top to the growth rate on bottom as X goes to infinity. And if you do that, then you can quickly get those limits. And that would have saved us a lot of time earlier when we were looking for limits of those rational functions. Thank you.